Hey, Jason Burns here, Tampa Bay Paranormal Investigations. This is kind of our little tech video we made. Um, Megan and I had found some videos online of people that were making different uh, paranormal investigation tools uh, from parts from Radio Shack. So we decided to, you know, give it a try ourselves and see if we could do some of the stuff they did. So the first one you're going to see a static detector, and then there's also a little light that I helped her make with her camera for her uh, video camera. So uh, here you go. And I made a little static scope, and as you can see, the light going in and out, coming on and off. That is when she is moving a piece of cellophane closer to it. Let me turn on the light and see if you can see it better now. Yeah, because all I got was black and a red light. Yeah, you can see the light. So there's our little static scope made with a 9-volt battery. You can see she isn't even getting really close to it with it. And the theory here is that spirits or ghosts or whatever it is that's common, causing the paranormal phenomenon can manipulate static electricity and energy fields and this one this is a detector we made so when the static comes close to it it turns the light off when the static gets far away the light is back on again so that's it in a nutshell and then also we made a little little extra light here I'm gonna flip that on and see if we can get the red lights to come on there so they can see it. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Take your finger off. You know what? My camera's, my cell phone sees infrared. Oh, let's try it in your daughter's room. Yep. It's, uh, it's on. All right. You can see it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, shine it up towards your face. Yep, I can see you're blue, though. Blue? Yeah, let me hold the light. Where's yeah. it at? Okay. Yeah. Yep. I can't see you though. No? Oh. Hmm. Oh, there we go. It's really super dim. Really? Yeah. Because my camera is probably still filtering some of the infrared out, but mm. a little bit's getting through. I mean, it's enough that you I wonder you how can... mine would be, because I have a different phone. Let me yeah. try that real quick. I mean, it's bright enough to where when you look at it on the camera, you can see the lights are definitely lit up, but it's not enough to where it illuminates anything. All right, so that was a test just with my cell phone and the, uh, the infrared lights that Megan and I built uh, tonight. The, uh, apparently, there are a couple of different kind of filters that they install on cameras. They have a low-pass filter and a high-pass filter. Apparently, the cell phone has a high-pass filter which means it picks up the upper spectrum of the infrared, but doesn't let the lower spectrum go, which the lower is what makes everything brighter, where you can see it a lot further. I'm sure when we get the infrared camera hooked up to it and use it, it'll, it'll light up the room just fine. Uh, just with a cell phone, it didn't do too good. All right, as you can see, the infrared light that I made is a little different than the square ones you see other people making with the five LEDs on it on the Radio Shack box. Um, this light panel I got, it goes into a CCT camera for like home security cameras and it has a sensor built into it so the light doesn't actually come on until you're actually in darkness or you need the light. So it'll come on and the darker the room, the brighter it'll get. So if you walk into a room that has light, it automatically dims your infrared light so you're not wasting your battery power. Just a little twist on, uh, you know, something that other people have done. We always like to try to go a step beyond and 
do things a little bit better. But um, if you want to know where to get those circuit boards at with the LEDs, I can help you with that or how we wired it. It's really simple. Um, just feel free to drop a comment or send us an email. I hope you enjoy.